What's up everybody? My name is Jacob Collier. This is Jethro the Crocodile and we are here today to introduce to you the Jacob Collier Audience Choir instrument. So I've spent the last few years touring all around the world, playing shows in all corners of the globe. Not that there are many corners, but that's another story. One of my favorite parts of the whole experience has been the ever-expanding evolution of the Audience Choir so the idea that I stand at the front of the stage and I conduct my audience polyphonically across many different chords, scapes, keys, and sound worlds. And over the course of this experience, one thing I was constantly craving and dreaming about was, what if I could sit in the comfort of my own home and you could sit in the comfort of your own home and experience the feeling of an audience choir at your fingertips? And so, what I did was I teamed up with the mighty Native Instruments gang and we put together this amazing instrument which is built out of real samples from real audiences the world over. It's quite a, a, a flexible and um, volatile and powerful engine for choir sounds for you and choir sounds for me. Let me explain how this works. So I have a keyboard here. And I can play notes on the keyboard. What you're hearing is real audiences. If we take a look at this plugin, on the right hand side here, you see all the cities listed. These are the cities that are active in the instrument right now. So if I play this note, which is an F, what you can see is there's Copenhagen, Cologne, Brisbane, Paris, and Madrid are all singing at the same time, which is kind of cool. If I change my note, as you can see, different cities light up, different cities are singing at different times, which I think is just a very, very cool concept. The amazing thing about this instrument is that it sounds like one choir, even though the truth is there are many tens of thousands of people singing, which is just kind of, kind of wild. So what I did is I captured audiences singing across four different vowel sounds, four main vowel sound groups. R, M, mm, U, and E. And what you can do here on the plugin, as you can see, is you can actually move this little dot around and you can change the bow sound as you're playing a note. So if I play a B flat minor chord, one of the best chords in the world. You get to paint those vowel sound trajectories by hand, which is very cool indeed. Now, if we click up here, this is the chord generator. And the chord generator is just a very, very simple engine for diatonic chords. So I can now play single notes. So there are a few simple controls here at the bottom of the plugin, which I can demonstrate right now. First of all, simply enough, dynamics. If I play a chord, control that dynamic level with a simple fader. Right now it's mapped to the mod wheel. You can change that if you'd like to, but I love the mod wheel. If I'm standing on a, on a real stage in front of a real audience, I do this, the dynamics look like this with my hands. So I feel when I'm playing this chord. Carve those trajectories dynamically, which is, which is very cool. Next we have this timbre knob, which acts a little bit like a filter. Taking away that high end. Bringing it back again. Super helpful for shaping those kinds of uh, audial trajectories. Super nice. Different kinds of colors in there. Next we have a delay knob, which kind of speaks for itself. Nice. Next up we have the reverb knob. Again, it kind of speaks for itself. Really dreamy. And I believe you can actually select a few different reverbs. If you go into this menu here, we have Big Hall, Heavenly Reflections, which is currently selected, Large Modulation, Sparse Clouds, and Sudden Break. Next up, we have the Stereo Knob, which again kind of speaks for itself. You get to decide how stereo you want this audience choir to be in the stereo field. That's pretty much mono. Widening up, beyond stereo. Again, attack and release, straightforward things, but very helpful. Attack is the length of time it takes for a note to begin. and choppy if you'd like. And then release is the duration of time it takes for the note to end. Short and snappy. Lengthy and ambiguous. We will have those days. So at the top of our keyboard up here, we have some stomp, clap, snap, 
bing, bong, yes, no, and maybe samples as follows. It's a great snap sample. I never have a snap sample that sounds as good as this. And now I have this one. Excellent. Good for me. Good for you. And then, uh... Yeah? Yeah? No. No. Maybe. Maybe. Bing. Bing. Bong. Bong. All helpful things when we're producing music, I would, I would wager. One of my favorite things about this plugin is just these amazing animations you see when I play a stomp sample. Feet appear, isn't that kind of rad? Ooh. Feet and arrows. Flaps. Make these exclamation points here. Sort of a smatterage of a paint splatter. Snaps. Create stars, as they should. These animations. I just think, I think this is so, so cool. And one other thing when it comes to playing chords in the main choir part of the instrument, which I love, is just the way in which the, uh, the audience venue kind of lights up. So this is actually a real audience choir captured on camera in Sydney, Australia, the very end of 2022, early December, if you were there, then you know. And as I play different notes, different portions of the audience light up at different times. Which I think is very rad, in my humble opinion. Now, in this menu here, we have a variety of more advanced options for tweakage, if you're interested in such things. The first is this tuning panel, which as you can probably imagine, appeals to me greatly. And if we enable this panel, then what happens within this instrument is, as I play a chord, it figures out what the chord is by itself in real time, and it will tune it to something approximating just intonation at all times, which is just amazing. So, say I play a C major chord here. You can see that it's averaged out the root and the fifth of the chord, and the, uh, the, the major third of the chord, all to be at zero sense difference. So the major third of the chord, which is E here, is down a little bit. And the root and the fifth are up a little bit, which just means that the tuning is that much more realistic, that much more meaningful, resonant, and just. One of the amazing things about audience choirs in, in the flesh, in person, is that people automatically tune to each other, often in just intonation, because uh, you know, the, the piano, the way the piano is tuned, doesn't normally apply to groups of singers en masse. It's kind of an amazing part of this plugin is that it's able to adapt as people would in real rooms to be very, very much in tune. I'll give you one other example. So that is an A dominant seventh chord. And as you can see, uh, the, the seventh of that chord is really nice and low, like it's deeply low, which uh, yeah, just for me as a lover of all tune systems is, is very, very cool. So again, one of my favorite things about this plugin is that it has this feature and that it's dynamic and it's real time and it's adaptive. So you don't have to tell it what to do. It already knows, kind of magical. And if we look down here at the bottom of the screen, you also see there's the ability to change the distance of the pitch bend. Oh, come on, we've all done that at one point in our lives, haven't we? It's a great feeling. God, I could do that all day long. You can actually enable aftertouch here, like so. Pressing down on the note um, increases the pitch by 12 semitones. Sometimes you want that. Pretty fun. Yeah, one of the coolest things about this current controller is you actually have polyphonic aftertouch. Kind of mind blowing. So you can control different notes by different amounts of aftertouch. This is quite a new feature in my imagination. Very, very cool. So again, just it's just about tactile control, having um having that ability to be musical and think on your feet. You have the ability to turn off the animations if you have bad taste and you don't like them, you can do that, but I highly do don't recommend that. One thing I've learned from conducting audiences over the last few years um, is that audiences tend to favor triads over densely clustery, um, rich, sort of uh, expensive voicings, as, as I like to call them. So if I play a chord like this, a dense chord, that sounds a bit woolly on the audience choir. It sounds powerful, but it does sound a bit woolly. It does in person too. If you try and to do too many things at once, it gets kind of loses its clarity, you could say. So uh, one thing I'd recommend for anyone who's you know starting to play around with this instrument, and mess around with it, is triads, three-part chords, rule. And sometimes four-part chords are fine too, but just there's so many amazing things you could do harmonically with three part. I tend to favor the sort of simpler chords within this instrument because it really, it really gets to soar. And one of the magical things about the audience choir is because there are literally 2,000 people or 5,000 people singing with every note, there is an amount of pitch variation which is part of its charm. 
And so to lean into that, to sort of favour that, I would definitely encourage triadic movement. It's always a good time. So the majority of this part of the instrument, the, the playable part, is all captured from single note instances. However, at the very top of the instrument up here, and this, you see this section is marked orange, these are actually triadically captured sounds. So this is when the audience was singing a triad by itself, all three parts captured in one audio file. And this is what that sounds like. So you see that's C major in all of its glory, organic glory. E flat major. Sharp major. A major. So these are real life triads that evolved and were recorded in time in their current state. And one of my absolute favorite parts of this instrument is that if you hold down one of these triads, like F sharp major, for example, you can uh, transform that from a major triad to a minor triad by using the triad blend knob here. And you get to control that differentiation yourself. Here's C sharp major. And C sharp minor, so cool. So if you're looking for some more specific voicings, you can play them down here. And if you're looking for more organic triads and you want to you know, base your songs around that, those kinds of worlds, you have all of this whole octave up here to play with. And essentially because there's the whole chromatic scale covered, you have every major chord and every minor chord you could ever wish for amongst the general equal temperament system which is just so, so great. So every time I play a note with the audience choir instrument, I'm playing a variety of cities from all around the world. So here's C sharp. And as you can see here on the right, we have Copenhagen, Munich, Oslo, Madrid, Luxembourg, and Adelaide all singing at the same time. What a unity of sounds. If I play C sharp major, which is three notes long, what I'm essentially doing is I'm bringing together multiple corners of the world at once. Zurich has joined the fray, Stockholm has joined the fray, Porto it looks like he's joined the fray. So for me, this instrument is meaningful, not only musically, but actually um, kind of emotionally almost, because of the kinds of people who are combining forces. We've got 15,000 or 20,000 people per triad here who have probably never met each other, and they are being brought together by you, the audience choir instrument performer. And here's the best thing. This incredible instrument is free. It's free for you to explore with. You can find it on the Native Instruments website or below in the description. Go check it out. Thank you so much for singing. Thank you so much for watching. Catch you later. Ciao.